One of you asked, do you have a video about the legislation in Europe for the mini drones from DJI? This is a question I got from Wartenberg because he's often getting confused what he's allowed to do and what he's not allowed to do when he's flying his sub 250 gram drone. And this is not specifically related to DJI. It's all drones that are below the 250 gram threshold. And just to be specific on this topic, this is the maximum takeoff weight that defines the 250 gram limit. So whatever you can stuff onto the drone that's officially being approved will be the determining factor if the drone is above or below 250 gram. With the Mini 3 or the Mini 3 Pro, we are good to go. Those are classified below 250 grams. What you're allowed to do and what you're not allowed to do in Europe, or should I say EU, not to offend our British friends, is basically being conveyed through an organization that's called EASA. EASA is the European Aviation Safety Agency. They are basically handling everything around air traffic in EU, including drones. In 2020, we got a revised set of drone rules with the purpose of simplifying the legislations across the member states of the EU. One of the things that got a lot easier was that there was a category defined called the open category that would make it easier for you and I to fly our drones as a recreational flyers. And if you go to the EASA website and look up open category for civil drones, you would see that the open category defines three airspaces. One where you are allowed to fly over people, one where you are allowed to fly close to people, and one where you are not allowed to fly anywhere near people. And those are called A1, A2, A3. Because none of the sub 250 gram drones that have been released so far into the market carries a class identification label, we have to look at the first table that is listed here on the EASA website. So by looking into this table, we will get clarity what is allowed with our sub 250 gram drone until the 21st of December 2023. So in the beginning of 2024, if the drone does not carry a class identification label, not to confuse with the CE mark, but it, if it doesn't carry a C0 label, then it's automatically becoming a legacy drone. The consequence of that, we can talk a little bit about that in the end of this video. So if we look at the table, you can see that drones below 250 grams, they are allowed to fly in the A1 airspace. And you can always fly your drone in A3, as long as the drone weight is below 25 kilos. So flying in the A1 airspace means that no flight is expected or an uninvolved people. If it happens, overflight should be minimized. So this basically means that you cannot intentionally plan on overflying people. But if you are flying in areas where there are people around, you can end up in a situation where you basically are above people. And then of course you need to try and minimize the time span. It's not allowed to fly over people in groups. As an example, flying over a concert with a lot of people is a no-go. So the next big question is, do I need to register my drone? No, you are not required to register your sub 250 gram drone. But you as an individual person needs to be registered as a drone operator if there's a camera present on the drone. You can buy a cheap ass drone below 250 grams and you can fly that around if there's no camera present on the drone. Then you don't need to register yourself as a drone operator. But as you know, cameras on these drones are pretty good. So it is mandatory that you register yourself as a drone operator. And there's no additional training required as well as no minimum age. The A1, A3 certificate is reserved for drones above 500 grams. I do want to mention what you heard in this video is a common baseline that's laid out by EASA and EU. There are local deviations that you need to take into account. So there's really no way around checking your local drone authorities what is allowed and what is not allowed. As there are stricter rules put into play in the different member states. As an example, I've been told that France is one of the most strict countries in the EU where you can fly your drone. I don't know the details, maybe you know and can list them below. So let's assume you won't be able to get a class identification label for your drone after we have passed into 2024. What happens then? Then we need to scroll down here on the page to how to operate drones in the open category from the 1st of January 2024. And there's a point here that's called privately built and drones purchased before 
1st of January 2024, under 250 grams. And if we take a closer look here, you would be pleasantly surprised to know that the rules are the same for drones below 250 grams. So I hope this provided at least a little degree of clarity of what is allowed to do with your sub 250 gram drone. If not, then drop a comment below with your question and I will look further into this. I hope you liked this video. If you did, then feel free to give it a like. If you did like it, feel free to press the dislike button twice. Thank you for watching and I'll be seeing you around.